up some reference pictures. I hope everything is coming across half decent. Okay, <clears throat> it's late. I have no idea how long this is going to last. It's not like I have to teach class in less than seven hours. <laughs> but I never seem to be able to stream while sculpting in the daytime. Because there's too many things going on, too many people... People call you, text you, which I should probably get in touch with my brothers. I haven't talked to them in a while. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. It looks kind of silly, huh? Here I need a flat thingy. There we go. The other day I got tired of being unable to find certain tools, so I started color coding them into things I use most often. Trying to fill in around these eyes because if you don't, they could move. They really piss you off. You work and work and work, and all of a sudden, like the eye moves and ruins everything. Your head wants to explode. I've had all kinds of little disasters happen. Really get happy with the sculpture. Finally, after like weeks. And then you drop it. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, let me see my subject here. So I asked this fellow for some reference pictures. And he gives me this goofy expression. And I'm thinking to myself, does he really want his action figure with this, like, very strange expression? <clears throat> so then I had to hunt down some other pictures. This one shouldn't be too bad, though, because I've got, <clears throat> I've got some things I can do with this. It'll be make it very recognizable. Of course, the hardest thing when you're, when you're looking at pictures of people is to find things where they have a neutral expression. Whenever you stick a camera in front of somebody, they always tend to smile. Stop being so happy, damn it. Happy, happy, happy. Everyone's happy. I always get that thing stuck in my head. It's from uh, South Park. That first season when they had the, uh, the Christmas pageant. And they ended up with the non-denominational Christmas thing. Happy, happy, happy. Everyone's happy from Philip Glass. Okay. Face shapes are always neat. I never really thought about it too much until I started sculpting them. You start to see all these little, little intricate shapes that make up the face. Of course, you want to go a little bit bigger than you would normally in the beginning. 
sometimes I think it's easier to shave down than it is to build up. Just bang my microphone. To quote my friend Cardinal Sin, bloody microphone. Okay. It's also interesting, too, to see the planes of the face, how they're different with different people. Like this fella here, his face is a little bit more squared off in a way. Whereas some people, it's like there's a plane here, two planes here, and then the sides. This fella here has got a little bit of like, it's kind of flat in the front. I got my little thingy here because I ripped up my finger pretty good. And... It's a little scabby, so I'm going to want to leave impressions in the clay. So I figured, yeah, we put this thingy on it. This is crazy. So I cut my finger the other day, and I went to Walmart. I'm thinking, oh, they should have, like, these finger cut thingies. So I asked the pharmacist where they were. Points me in the direction. Of course, they don't have any. I'm like, well, I don't feel like wearing a whole glove because that just gets sweaty and uncomfortable. <clears throat> so I um, stopped off at Walgreens. They wanted $7.50 for 30 of these things. And I'm like, that seems like a lot. Especially when you look at the full rubber gloves that has not just one finger, but five and a hand and all that. And I can get a hundred of them for ten bucks. And you only get me give me thirty of these for seven fifty. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. So Amazon it was. Good evening. Skogli Juton. Would that be Jotun? Hmm. I have to brush up on my Scandinavian. So I start with the basic shape of the head. I always put it on a, a peg like this with a... Um, go with a square one, because if you do a round one, the head will spin on it and it won't hold still. You'll be holding it here and all of a sudden it'll just go boom and roll around the other side. Yeah, I learned that the hard way. Um, okay. Let's see. Okay. Now I'm going to start looking at the contours of the face. <clears throat> this is where it's always tricky to find an expression. That will help. So I'm saying, like, his right eyebrow always has a tendency to be up a little bit. So that's going to be interesting. The nose has a downward tilt to it. Uh, let's see here. I want something a little flatter, but thinner. Okay. So we're going to go in here where the nose comes in. And this kind of sits in a little flat. This guy here. One thing I used to have a big problem with was not making the um, the lower eyelid area here deep enough. I noticed my, visually I was looking at it and thinking of it, it was more pronounced than it actually is. It's a little tricky. Okay, so we get this guy here. It's funny, these start, things start out looking like Muppets. <laughs> and over the course of a few hours, they'll turn into a face and you start to look at more. The more you look at these things, the more sculptures and faces, I mean, the more things you start to notice about faces in general. Okay. 
now we got to do measurements. Good set of calipers, your best friend. Now, I noticed one of the things that I was doing in my earlier sculpts was that <clears throat> I was starting off the head. Because you want the head about like 40 millimeters. Um, but I was starting off at 40 millimeters. And by the time I would get to the, the hair and everything, this thing would like grow. And uh, so I found that it's actually a little bit better to start off smaller. Because you can always like work up a little bit. And you'll find just by the general process itself, it will work up by itself. Okay. Now... Ah, crap. I left my thing over there. Well, one second. I really like this thingy. It's a um, spreader for body filler. You can pick up at a an auto body store or auto parts store, and it works out really well because you want something you can roll flat on, but still pick it up so you can get a blade underneath to peel it up. Because sometimes the sculpey will stick. And that's really a pain. I guess I should have did that. Huh? Okay, let me see. Just one second here. Me just a second. Okay. Have to answer a quick uh, message here. The customer just got back to me. Okay.
<laughs> I've been talking this whole time. My microphone was off. <laughs> That was ridiculous. I hate when I do stupid things. Ah, uh, do I say who it is? Do I say who it is? Oh, sorry. Hello, Mark. Good to see you. Well, let's put it this way. This subject most of the ones that I sculpt are all gray. This one's only going to be 75% gray. <laughs> yeah, I was talking and my microphone was off. this in a little bit all right now i gotta measure the distance between the eyes that's always fun okay so let me find a this is where i the goofy expression here will come in handy okay so Go here. I want this 36 inches high, millimeters high. Woo. See, now that's the thing. Okay. This is, this is weird. All right. Now, see, when I started this thing off, it was 36 millimeters. Just by handling the clay very gently, the head has elongated now another two millimeters. So I'm going to have to like <laughs> adjust that a little bit. The face is a little bit wider than it needs to be. That's okay because I can adjust that later. Okay, so now I got to go here. I got to measure this up to the image on screen like that. And I got to kind of flip you this way and measure. Okay. Now, everything I've done, I've just been eyeballing. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm measuring with my calipers the distance for the center of the eyeballs. And I am off. Now, this is where it really, really stinks. So now what I have to do is I have to undo all this. And I have to space the eyes over a little bit. <sighs> See, this is why you always have whiskey while you're sculpting. Um, hey, Herc 130. Good to see you. Oh, and there's my dog barking. I'll be right back.
See, there's a big drawback to sculpting in the middle of the night. Okay. Um, because I'm the only one that can let the dog out because everyone else is asleep. The dog knows that I'm downstairs and won't go upstairs and go to sleep until I'm upstairs. But I'm also the one that has to let her out when she's got to go out. She's 11. She may be very upset today. I've been going through this whole thing with her trying to figure out what she... Because she's been getting pancreatitis. And so basically if she eats anything too fatty, she vomits bile. Pancreas kind of kicks into overdrive and she vomits bile. Sorry, yeah, it's a little gross, but she's an old dog and it happens. But I went through, can't tell you how many, trying to find something that she will eat. She lost a whole bunch of weight. I mean, she started off as 85 pounds. Now she's dropped down to about 70 and maybe a little less than that. And <clears throat> which is really concerning. I've had her to the vet. She cost me about $2,000 last month to get like no answers, which is really aggravating. One of the things I hate about the medical industry. Oh, sorry to hear about your sister. Oof. Terrible for a dog to have it, let alone a human. Ooh. So, yeah, so she, um, I was feeding her baby food. She was costing me about $100 a week and just, just to feed the dog. And so then she uh, um, starts looking up on top of the refrigerator where I keep her snacks. And she's like, Hey, Daddy, can I get a treat from on top of the fridge? It's amazing how her voice sounds so ridiculously human when she does that. Or maybe it's just me pretending it's her talking. But anyway, so she uh, she's sitting there. Can I have something off the top of the fridge? So I'm like, I don't know what you can eat, kid, because you're going to, I wanted to make you throw up. And she's like, oh, there's got to be something up there that's good. So I said, okay, you got these biscuits here. You want one of them? And she's she's old and she's like, you know, doesn't really like crunching the big biscuits too much anymore, even though she's a large dog. So I break the biscuit up into little tiny pieces. <clears throat> um, and she eats it so I'm like holy crap maybe this is it maybe maybe I'll go and if I can find like a small kibble dog food maybe she'll eat it and I don't know what she'll eat so I figured let me try out a couple different kinds of dog food maybe they have sample packs which would be a great thing if anybody's got an idea they want to like be an entrepreneur and make little teeny tiny bags of dog food for your, you know, finicky dog. Uh, people like me could really use it. Um, but yeah, so. Uh, speaking of dogs, let me go let her back in. Okay, all right. Let's do this again. Back, Jack. Do it again. Okay. So, get this. So, I get her 
um, this Hill Science Diet stuff. Very little kibbles, like you know, for like a a little purse-sized dog, and she eats it. She goes crazy. She's like eats the whole thing. I'm like, oh my god, this is great. I've never been so excited to spend twenty-three dollars on a, an eight-pound bag of dog food in my life. So I was spending, uh, like I said, a hundred dollars a week in baby food just to find something she could eat that wouldn't set her off and make her vomit. So yeah, that was that was fun. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Just slice too much off on the one side here. Brr. Hate when that happens. I'm gonna kind of patch this up a little bit. So anyway, so I got her this dog food, and she's been eating it. And then she lied to me. She looked up at me. She was like, "Daddy, I don't like this food anymore. I think I'll just go lay down and not eat it." So of course I'm like, "You got to eat." I mean, we've just been through this. You got to eat. And yeah, she decided she wasn't going to eat. So I get her another jar of baby food and I put it in there. And she's like, and she eats it. And like, oh, you know what? While I'm here, I might as well eat all the other food that's in my bowl too. So she ate all the other food that was in her bowl. So I'm like, oh, I see what you're doing here. You're being sneaky. Like, you know, you're supposed to be the one I can trust. You know, you're supposed to be able to trust your own dog, right? Man's best friend. All that. Yeah. Pfft mercenary it's because she's female never had luck with females it was lie to me so anyway she said uh you know this is all like in, in my head that i'm thinking all these like dog responses and stuff okay see like this is what i mean i've said before in some of these things like you don't realize just the the touch of your hand the head went from being relatively rounded, like I was, as, as I was touching it, it deformed it and put it over here, so I had to kind of put it back. You really want to try and get this into as close a position as you can to start with and keep it there. Otherwise, God, it's a pain. Like, you get done and you're like, crap. One side of the face is lopsided. Then you got to try and go through hell to try and straighten it out. So it's much easier to try and get it together before you get too far in. Okay. So let's try this I thing again. It's all about me and I. Oh, crap. I just realized I'm supposed to watch She-Hulk. I really don't want to watch any more She-Hulk. God, it's so awful. Really bad jokes. I don't know anybody that thinks it's funny. I mean, I might just be like of a, you know, me and my group of friends. That maybe we're just toxic males and we don't, you know, I don't get the humor. You know, the funny thing is, though, it's like. I don't know if they really want viewers. They really want, I mean, that's not where you make your money. George Lucas taught everybody, like, you make your money in the merchandising. Is that what Yogurt said? Merchandising. That's where the money is.
one side. Knife. Ah, see, little bits of tape on here. Like, you know, so I see the little white band. I know, hey, that's my knife. But you got all these little silver tools floating around. They kind of look the same. They all look the same after a while. I wonder if gynecologists say that. Sorry. When you think about that, when a guy, anybody goes to work, you go to work all day, and the last thing you want to do is see more of the same thing that you just worked on all day. Like a mechanic comes home from work and his, his wife says to him, honey, there's something wrong with the car. He's like, you know, honey, if I see another car today, I'm just going to go crazy. Carpenter comes home from work. His wife says, the cabin door fell off. And he says, you know, if I see just one more, though, I'm going to go crazy. The gynecologist comes home and his wife's in the mood and she says, you know, honey, if I see one more. <laughs> yeah. Terrible, terrible joke. <laughs> okay. I can work with that. This side's going to come in a little bit anyway. All right. Now, so I notice this eye is a little bit lower. So I'm going to take this and Cut a little sliver off of here, like so, and pick this thing up here like this, and just kind of pop you right there, and get my little guy here, pull that in, push that in, and go that way. Okay. Yeah. Of course, the tricky part of this is to make sure his lower eyelid is not that big, but it's going to be much easier for me to add a little bit more cheekbone in here than it is to try and like get that lower. Um, uh... oh, thanks, Mark. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I'm so excited for more She-Hulk. I'm a huge Marvel Comics fan. I started collecting Marvel Comics back when I was eight years old, back in 1976. Wait, that makes me very old. Anyway. Um, I was so happy when the MCU came out and they were doing such a good job. So many really good movies. So many good representations of all these classic characters. And then, and then we had to hit all this nonsense. I want to see myself on screen. No, you don't. You really don't want to see yourself on screen. Because if you wanted to see yourself on screen looking all heroic, you'd get your ass to the gym. You'd work out and you'd stop eating at McDonald's. Just my two cents, right? You know? Most people don't want to do the work to actually, like, stay healthy and stay in shape. They say they do. But to paraphrase Dr. House, everybody lies. Okay. Right. Take this guy again. I'm going to try and keep this balanced on both sides. So when I add the clay in on both sides, at least it's going to be even. Right. Okay, now eyelids. 
pop this guy in here like this. I'm going to take this here, gather up all this extra clay here like this. Roll it up. Smush, 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 smush. Smushy, 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 smush. Fishy, 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 fish. I wonder where my fish has gone. Oh, where, oh, where can it be? Monty Python, the meaning of life. Meaning of life, or was it? Know, one of them. He did the whole fish sketch. He certainly was an elusive fish. And he went wherever all it did go. You think those guys were on acid when they made that show? Or were they just that strange? Difficult question, because, like, you know, it certainly was the, the time period for it. Not that I would know about anything like that. Just because I lived through the 80s doesn't mean I was one of those people on cocaine. <laughs> Surely no drugs were involved. She don't lie, she don't lie, she don't lie. Cocaine. Although I must say, back in the 80s when so much cocaine around, the girls on the dance floor were pretty thin. <laughs> I don't know if there's a correlation, but... Are you suggesting people should do drugs to lose weight? No. No. Might have been a side benefit, but you know. It's pretty funny, like, you know, let's say they didn't make Black Widow get fat and depressed, but only Thor. Yeah, to laugh at his expense. None of the female characters, though. Okay. All right, let me see if I can't get this. I adjusted after I scratched my own eyebrow. All right, take this thingy here. Go there and kind of shape that out a little bit. Push up in the middle here a little bit. And bring this up here a little bit. All right, I think we're starting to get into somewhat of the shape of the eye. Yay! And all the people cheered. Of course, even at this stage, it's all very preliminary. Okay, take that out, cut that out, cut that out, scoop this thing up, put you right there. Now I take this thing, that's because even the YouTubers that get on there, Mark, are like, you know, they... The ones that they'll allow on there, um, they wouldn't be so uncouth as to be so abrupt. You know, it's kind of like, you know, that you need somebody who would be what Howard Stern pretended to be. You know, Howard Stern went out there and he mocked all these celebrities and stuff like that until he became one of them. And then all of a sudden, you know, his mockery kind of came to an end. Okay, so let's see here. Another thing most people don't realize, when you smile, it changes the shape of your eye too. I think I might have to push this one back a little tiny bit. Right there. Yeah, that's it. Better. 
Mucho Betero. Wild E. Coyote. Super Genius. I kind of like the way that sounds. Wild E. Coyote. Super Genius. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am really dating myself now with the uh, cartoon references. Okay, now, here's where we get into an issue. And here's where it gets difficult because, you know, my subject here didn't really hold still for a straight picture. So I have to try and estimate the eye level. Now, I'm seeing in the photo, the inside of the eye does look a little bit lower than the outside of the eye. Now, the trick to this is to make sure you get it in here without making it look too Asian. So as far as I know, this fellow might be 25% one minority, but he's not any percentage Asian, I don't believe. With this thin nose and his... Okay. All right, I'm going to open that up. There's the rest of the eye there. Okay. All right, I think that's going to be it for tonight because it's 2 o'clock in the morning and I've been streaming for 48 minutes now. i got to go to bed because i got to be up in the morning and teach a class. But then I have a lot of time off after that tomorrow uh, between classes. So I can get a whole bunch more sculpting. But I do have to get to the mailbox and start mailing out Yafit figures. Um, Yafits are starting to go out. I have a couple of the background backdrops made. If you haven't seen the Yafit figures, I'll uh, try and find. If you're an Orville fan, I did all my math and stuff like that and tried to figure out a reasonable price for them. Okay, that's it. Fellas, thanks for watching. Anybody else who comes along and checks this thing out, thank you very much for tuning in. Tomorrow, I hope to get some more of this guy worked on, maybe even finished. Ooh, look at that. That one eye is really higher than the other. Ugh. I really got to, like, that's terrible. Look how much higher that eye is. I think I'm going to have to adjust the whole head like that. Move this over here and put that over there. Now it's going to be balanced out a little bit more. It'll be better. Anyway, yeah. If I let myself look at that, I'm going to get involved in it. And that's not going to be good because then I'll be up all night. And I need some sleep. Okay. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Intrude.